Good morning. Today is the 28th day of September in this 2022nd year of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, as promised by the weather forecasters last night, we are in the 60s. It is uh, relatively cool this morning, a light breeze blowing, um, cold front moved in, and uh, that will affect uh, how the hurricane uh, impacts Myrtle Beach in our area. So uh, I hope that uh, our preparations are minimal. It looks like uh, we'll have a nice rain event and uh, that will be okay uh, as the water tables are down a bit and we can accommodate that around here with uh, lowering of the lakes and making preparation in that way. <clears throat> so stay safe wherever you are. Pray for the folk of uh, Florida that will be uh, slammed pretty soon if not already, uh, that they might be safe and the loss of life and property might be minimal. Today, a, a reading from John's Gospel in the 8th chapter. He who is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. The Jews answered him, are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? And Jesus answered, I have not a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it and he will be the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if any one keeps my word, he will never see death. And the Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. And you say, If any one keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? And the prophets, who died? Who do you claim to be? And Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say that he is your God. But you have not known him, I know him. If I said, I do not know him, I should be a liar like you. But I do not know him, but I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he was to see my day. He saw it and was glad. The Jews then said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? And Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. And so they took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple the Gospel of our Lord Jesus. Conrad J.I. Bergendorf, who lived between 1895 and 1997, uh, a ripe old age indeed, um, writes in I Believe in the Church, the conviction <clears throat> that God is and therefore speaks was of far greater import to the prophet, Isaiah 40, 25, 26, than the social regulations or even the social welfare which his word commanded. The personality of God mattered more than the wishes of his creatures. In the New Testament is, the no, is no mere collection of beautiful sentiments strong as pearls on the string of social solidarity. The supreme significance of the gospel is a person, Jesus Christ. Because he spoke them, the Beatitudes have meaning. Because he took them, the parables are important. Told them, the parables are important. His miracles are of less weight as wonders than as expressions of a wonderful person. The disciples he gathered about him followed him, not because of convincing things he said, but because they found in him a source of life, of companionship, of comfort. All their anticipations crashed to the ground when they saw him on.
on the cross. But his spirit did not leave them. In fact, they came to realize that he was king even on the cross. And they spent the rest of their lives not in proclaiming a set of regulations whereby all men could have material comfort, but in proclaiming him who was worthy of devotion, sacrifice, obedience, adoration. The heart of the New Testament is the living, pulsating heart of Christ, and they who know it as something less know only what may be discovered by the dissection of a corpse. I hold that the most important work of the church today is the enthroning of Christ in the unity of the parish church. Here is the justification for all the energy and patience required to make the church school a real school for the kingdom of God. For this reason, every thought put into the ennobling and visualizing of worship of the congregation bears fruit a hundredfold. On this account, the confidence inspired in his parishioners by the faithful pastor as he ministers to young and old, the living and the dying, the believer and the scoffer, are to me clearer evidence of the kingship of Christ than all the high-priced organization endeavors which are sometimes resorted to because men have lost faith in the slower, more tedious methods of winning souls one by one. If there is to be a, reg a regeneration of American communities, be it in the metropolis or in the highway crossroads village, it may come from the small unit of a Christian congregation whose members have Christ as king in their lives. And join me in prayer. Lord, your very words are life and give hope and restoration to the mire of the life that we sometimes find ourselves bogged down in. You lift us up, O oh Lord, from the very power of the throes of sin. Your word gives healing to the nations and hope to the prospects of better days. We pray, O oh Lord, that we might have the faith and confidence to share that precious word that you spoke through our lives lived, through words that might touch people in their moments of difficulty and wonder, and lift them up beyond the material that we think is so valuable and important to us, to the level of life which has full meaning because we have walked with you. Bless us, O Lord, in this day. Give us thankful hearts for the goodness of the fall season, the seasons, the changings of the times, the turning of the earth on its axis, the spinning through the vast universe that we call home, and the multitude of universes that lie beyond. We are so small and infinitesimal but we are so great in your sight. We thank you for that blessing that you call us your own and that we can call upon you. We do so, O oh Lord, in these times of peril for many, for the people of the Ukraine who are caught up in the midst of war and the loss of land, and for the injustices that have been perpetrated upon them. Deliver them, O oh Lord, and give them peace for the peoples of the Caribbean who have been devastated by hurricane forces and the inundation of wind and rain in all places, and for those that will yet anticipate it in this day and the days to come, as Hurricane Ian will pass through, give safety and protection and help and hope. We pray, O oh Lord, for those that are seeking your healing presence, we are thankful for the healing that you have wrought for Benita and her arm and 
for the recovery that lies ahead for her, give her patience and all that is needful for those that have been hospitalized, for, for Kathy Stimler, for Billy, for those that are recovering yet still, for Roger and Nancy and Hunter. We pray your hand of healing and care will be with Nikki and Tom and Lisa, for Evelyn Tompkins, Evelyn and James Ragg, for Elaine, for others that we commend to your keeping and your care, remembered in this moment of silence. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor, giving you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, this day and forevermore. Amen.